Oh, hello, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. I'm very excited to welcome you all to the first day of our 13 days of Halloween series here at Polly's Paper Studio, and this is version 2.0. So I had originally planned to start my series yesterday and I recorded my video, but the computer ate part of the footage and so I wasn't able to uh, show a finished project and I thought, well, I'll just create that tutorial again, but with a different card. And I know that sounds a lot like the computer ate my homework, but you can see here I have data, 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 no data in the middle. So I had all the beginning and all the end and none of the fun stuff in the middle, which was super frustrating. And I do not have any idea where that footage went, but I did switch my SD card today and I also put in a new battery. So I think we're gonna be all set. And so we're gonna make these gatefold Halloween cards with belly bands. And this was my original one that I didn't get to show yesterday, but we're gonna remake this tutorial with a different collection. So we're still gonna be able to create the base and then finish it. And then I'll show you both cards when we get into the tutorial. So today is very gloomy, it's very dark and very rainy. And so it's the perfect atmosphere to be creating our fun holiday project. So I hope that you plan to join me for the full series. I have so many cool crafty projects planned for you guys and I cannot wait to show you. So if you're new around here, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and join our crafty little family. And we are also going to be bringing back the question of the day. So that's going to be at the end. So make sure that you stay tuned to the end. And before we get started on the tutorial, I want to very quickly thank the Tech Hubby for providing me with another super awesome intro. I always look forward to seeing those and you definitely did not disappoint. And I know a lot of you guys really love his intros as well. So give him a shout out in the comments and let him know how much you love our 13 days for 2021. So now we can get started on our tutorial. So for the original card, I used the A Little Scary collection. This is from Fancy Pants Designs. It is super cute. I picked up the six by eight paper pad as well as the ephemera pack. I've had so much fun layering up these great images and making different combinations. So this is actually the fourth card I've made with this collection. And if you want to see the other ones, they are already on Instagram. So you can check the link in the description for that. But this card was so sweet. I just love the non-traditional sort of colorway. Now it is orangey, but kind of peach too. So I made my colors a little bit more muted and crafted my own flowers to coordinate. And then this is so sweet with a little house and the cat. And you all know that I am a cat person. So I'll just slide that belly band off and show you how the inside of the card is decorated. I thought it would be fun to add more of those ephemera pieces on the inside as well as a place to add a sentiment. So you fold that back up and slide that back in the band. So for today's card, we are going to switch out the collection and I'm going to use the Trick or Treat collection. This is from Echo Park, not this year, um, but it is still available. I checked online, so if you like this, combination of patterns and vintage colors, then you can still get that. I have the 12 by 12 paper pack and I used that along with all of these fun ephemera pieces that I picked up from that dollar store haul that I did uh, not too far back. If you want, I'll leave a link in the description for that as well so you can see the fun crafty items I picked up from there. So these are called journal cards. I'm not really sure why, but they're just a sheet of images basically and you can cut them out using a border of that white so that they will look like actual ephemera pieces. So you get quite a lot in here and then I'm also utilizing the packaging because I liked this sentiment but for the actual images inside it was a little too large for my project and so I just clipped it out and I'll have a whole nother set of these images to utilize and I think these are a good scale for possibly making memory decks cards or tags so you might see those in a future video. 
So here's the card base and I have cut a 65 pound weight card stack that is 12 inches wide, seven inches high. And then I came in with my first score line at three inches and then I put the other one at nine. And so this is going to give me a seven by six inch card. And normally I would make my card six by six, but I did want a little bit of extra room there so that I would have a nice amount of the background layering showing when I put the focal images on. So I'll just go ahead and finish the inside first. That's the easiest way. And I I've picked out the plaid, which will come to no surprise to anyone. And I'm gonna use the same black cardstock throughout because I do like to have a consistent look. I'm also cutting that a little bit small so that I have a border of the white cardstock showing around. So this is going to be uh, five and seven eighths by six and seven eighths for the cardstock, and the pattern paper is going to be five and three quarters by six and three quarters, and that way I get my double border that I like. So here's a section for a sentiment to be added, and that's pretty easy to line up on that plaid pattern. And I'll tap it with one of the images here from that journal cut apart ephemera pack. I really love how the colors in that pack match beautifully with the trigger treat collection. It didn't it wasn't part of the collection, but it does coordinate very well. And then here's the larger version of that spooky sentiment. And this one was part of the cut apart. I'm gonna put it here so that it will balance the larger ephemera piece on the bottom. So now the inside is all set and you can add whatever perfect sentiment will work for the recipient of your card. Now for the front, I've got two separate sections and so I'm going to add my card stack first. So this is two and seven eighths by six and seven eighths and that's just going to fit right in that side panel. I'm leaving my border, then I'll top it with this glorious vintage -y candy piece. I think it's so fun to see these kind of traditional candies, but in spooky Halloween themed colors. So here is this side, and I wanna also include more of that plaid because I like to layer on my patterns. So I'm gonna put this one on the bottom, and I've just cut that to the two and three quarter as my pattern paper is. And then the first sheet of the pattern paper is six and three quarter by two and three quarter. And then I cut this one to two and three quarter as well so that I could utilize that same border that is already there. I've gone ahead and created my panel for this side. I'm just going to go ahead and layer that on. And this creates the gatefold portion of our card. So now what we want to do is bring in the belly band and it is tempting to go ahead and just score this at the same measurement you did for your card, but you don't want to do that because it will get very snug and it'll be difficult to slide these pieces in and out. So I'm going to bring in another piece. Now it's still 12 inches wide and we're going to wind up with a little gap, but I'll show you how to fix that when we fold it around, but this is three inches wide now, and that is larger than my typical band, but I do want to have a little bit of room for the excess of the embellishments because I have a lot of those as well. So I'm just going to fold this over. I'm not being very snug with it. I'm just kind of gently folding that over and even maybe uh, making sure there's a little bit of extra gap because you want that card to slide in nicely. So now what you've got to do is put some adhesive here and here and I'll start with my double-sided adhesive tape and then add on a layer of Tombow because we do want this to be very secure. So I'm going to pull the tape from one of the sides first, and then I'll add my Tombow. This seems to be a little bit easier than trying to manage both sides with wet adhesive on them. And so I'll just pull this paper off and add my Tombow right in the middle. So here is the bridge, as it were, that connects the sides together. And so this is a um, 
cardstock layer it is two and seven eighths by five and seven eighths and remember we're working on having that nice border all the way around so i didn't put my adhesive all the way to the outside edges so that i don't have to worry about any overlap but now you can see how it would be a challenge to wrangle these two pieces together if they both had wet adhesive so i'll just press one side down and now that that's secure i can go ahead and pull the tape from this side as well a little bit more tombow for good measure then that's just as easy as lining these up across the card so unfortunately this collection did not have a lot of really smaller patterns and i wanted that because of this belly band i want to add some of the pattern paper to the outside edge where it will show on the outside of the focal panel but i didn't have any that were just the right size for that in my 12 by 12 sheets so i went to my journal cards and i found this one and i'm very sad to sacrifice this cheeky little cat but i thought that i could use the stripe on the side of the journal card so i cut that down and then I cut it in half. So we're gonna just divide it and put one portion on either side. So if you were to just use one strip of pattern paper, it would be two and three quarter by five and three quarters. So mine is still two and three quarter, but of course I had to cut it in half so that I can make it stretch across the front nose. Here is the side. and then this side as well so we're only going to be seeing that stripe and i'll have to add another layering piece on so that i can cover the portion of the cat that still shows so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in my focal panel and you see i do have some little ears sticking out there so what i want to do is kind of basically center this so I know where it's going to fall and then I'm going to use more of those die cuts from that sheet. I cut it out with the white border and then I cut that in half again so that I can utilize that scalloped edge with a little bit of a decorative detail. I'm just going to slide that in until none of the words on the die cut show and none of the cat on the bottom paper shows so this is actually kind of a nice detail i think i really like how that extra curvy edge brings a little bit of a different shape to this card which is otherwise very rectangular okay let's get on to this portion so what i want to do is kind of check where my tape needs to end and so i'm going to add more of my double-sided adhesive here and i'll just put it on to the band because i don't want to accidentally glue or tape this together so i know if i don't go beyond the limits of this image then all of my adhesive will be where i want it so i'll just pull this tape very quickly this is a little different from the original cards. I didn't have this additional um, ephemera piece, but I think it will be just perfect. And then of course I do want to come in with a little bit more of that Tombow so that I know my focal panel will be very secure. So now we're going to switch to 110 pound card stock. That's important because you're gonna add heavy things to this panel and you want it to be very sturdy. So it's four by five. I'm just going to center that on the band so that I've got it nice and square and even. So now it's time to decorate our panel and I have my card stack again. So this one's gonna be three and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my layered borders on. And then here is my pattern paper. And so this is going to be three and three quarter by four and three quarter. And I just love this non-contrasting spiderweb pattern. I think it adds a lot of detail without being too busy in the background. So for my original card, I did include a doily, but for this card, the image I chose to be in the background is a very cool spiderweb. And I thought that would be long on a doily so I'm just going to go ahead and layer it on here and I think the um, 
layered spider webs look very cool because they're so different. This one contrasts highly and this one does a really cool effect that way. And so here's my focal image and I think these little witch feet are so, so funny. So I did pop these up on a spacer because I want to get a little bit of dimension from this card and I'm offsetting that just a little bit because I need to leave room for my sentiment and here that one is. Remember I said that I cut this from the packaging instead of from the actual sheets itself and because I have a overlap of the side where it's dimensional I went ahead and put my spacer on this side. So this will be well supported even though it hangs off and then to finish off this portion of the arrangement I've just got one of the smaller jack-o-lanterns and that's just going to go right here beside of the cauldron. Now I have created my arrangement. It's just the same as in the first card. I just switched out the flower colors a little. This one isn't in peaches. This is more actual orangey. Um, and then I actually inked this paper as well to match that candy in the background. And I'm just adding some of my Cinch and Go Poinsettias. That's my favorite for filler flowers for holidays. I've got loopy twine bows here. Some of this netting has spider webs on it in a glittery effect. I know that's hard to see. Um, I picked that up in my Dollar Tree haul as well. And then I finished my arrangement with two types of leaves. They're cut from the, uh, this one is cut from glittery cardstock. And then the bottom one is just cut from my black cardstock from the base. And then I finished off with that bow. So this is a bold check pattern and so this is going to go right here. I know it's going to cover a little bit of, well mostly of that die cut, but that's okay because I'm so happy to have that extra space on the band so that I can extend my flowers out here and that way I don't cover up too much of my images. I'm definitely adding this with the hot glue because it is heavy and very chunky so I want it to be very secure. Once I've got that pressed down I'll just go ahead and fluff up my petals a little bit where they got squished and that sort of anchors the left hand corner. Now what I want to do is bring in some charms and some buttons and so as I do I've tied them at a different length and then tied them together so I can secure this as one piece and then just hold them right where I want them to fall and that will be easier to secure them. Put that on with hot glue and then I'll just cover those cut edges of the string with that vintage button. So three more buttons to add to the bottom here. I want to bring in some sequins to balance these buttons. I'll just put a couple on to the pattern paper and then bring one down into the die cut so that it's a nice layered look. I'm just going to adhere those with my Tombow. And then last but not least, I have some crystal stickles. There are lots of opportunities to add this to the details of the card just for accent. So I think I'll hit like maybe every other stripe on these tights. I don't want to do every one because that would be too much. I don't know how well that even shows on camera, but I can see it here and I think it's fabulous. So let's bring some more of that detail down into our jack-o-lantern and maybe a couple of them here on the bottom. So that kind of brings out that detail. And then maybe just a little bit in the web, not a lot, because you could very easily go overboard with stickles, I think. So let's put some down here as well. And then when that dries, it will just be a very nice extra added detail. Okay, that's it for our gatefold Halloween card with the belly band for version 2.0 
Here is the first one so you can see them together. I don't normally get to post two projects that have the same design but with a different collection. So maybe that was a fortuitous happening and so I think they both look really cool. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure that you come back tomorrow for day two. And don't forget that we are bringing back question of the day. So for the question today, I'm going to ask you what is your favorite Halloween candy because we do have have candy in the background of our card and I'll answer mine right away that is a Mr. Good Bar so make sure that you leave me a big thumbs up for this tutorial and remember you can find links in the description for all our social media sites and don't forget to check out Instagram because that's where I've put my other cards that I created with the a little scary collection all right if you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe and join my crafty little family. And as always, I wish you a happy and productive day and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.